Hello everyone, Gebatron here. Now that we've covered all the mechanics of Half Tracks in this video here, let's take it a step further and talk tactics. I recommend you watch that video before moving on in this one. How are these vehicles being used successfully? Keep in mind that this guide is not the end-all be-all on this topic, as I'm sure there are other ways to use Half Tracks that aren't covered in this guide. Feel free to comment with your own experiences. First, real quick, let's talk about what you should not do. You should not take these or move them without asking first, as they may be set up strategically. You should not drive them directly into the enemy point unless directed, and for the love of Mendez, never stop them and get out while leaving the engine running. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the ways these can be implemented successfully. The examples I'll be using here take place under warfare mode conditions. Your tactics will need to adapt for offensive matches, and we'll touch on that as we go through the video. Let's talk early game. Unlike garrisons, half-tracks can be set up in neutral territory. So why not use this to your advantage right off the bat? In this example on Hurtgen Forest, you can see we have our initial garrison set up here in the east of Grid D3. This is close to the active sector, but over 200 meters away from the actual strong point. Moving a half-track somewhere in the sector early is a great way, and the only way, to get a team spawn closer to the strong point. Now someone will have to wait to get the half-track as it will be on a 5 minute cooldown, but after the 3 minute match warm-up period, the wait is only two minutes, which isn't that long. As a commander, you can wait here and take the half-track up, but I've also done this as a spotter. I think it's important for the regular infantry to get to the front as soon as possible and establish OPs, so I do not recommend having them wait for a half-track. The half-track is not a replacement for OPs, so it is still important that you and other squads are getting those up. What this half-track helps do is give your squads that lose their OPs a place to spawn that is closer to the action than one of your initial garrisons. Another benefit to getting a half track here early is that if you happen to lose the initial fight for the middle point, you still have a place to spawn in the active sector to re-establish yourself as half tracks are not destroyed when territory is lost like garrisons and OPs are. Now let's move to St. Maragliese and talk defense. Here we've been pushed all the way back to La Prairie. I don't like having garrisons inside strong points, but I find that having a half-track in or near it can work out. Before we move on, I need to say that half-tracks are not a replacement for a good garrison and OP network. If all you are relying on is your half-track, then you are bound to lose. These are best used as a supplement, and not in and of themselves game-changers. Having said that, placing a half-track in or near your defensive point will allow your team another place to spawn, while also allowing your other garrisons to be closer to the point than they normally would be if you had a garrison placed inside the point. Something to keep in mind while on defense in an offensive mode match. Here is where I placed it from the ground level. Notice it's not out in the open, but behind some buildings and near some cover. This will help give our troops an opportunity as well as help conceal it and protect it from enemy air support. Always try to find a bit of cover as half tracks are relatively fragile. If we begin losing our last point, then we will also lose access to our corresponding HQ spawn. A half-track can be a good way to replace this lost HQ spawn in a last-ditch effort to try and get a spawn inside the sector rather than having to spawn at a different HQ and running the whole way. Just spawn it in and it's instantly a garrison. It's best to do this preemptively though, so pay attention and try to do this before you begin losing control. In a perfect world, I like having two half-tracks on the field at any one time. Of course, this depends on the current fuel and vehicle situation. But while we have this half-track taking on defensive duties, we should also have one working more offensive duties. In this example, we have two offensive or red zone garrisons, one to the north and one to the south of western approach. We also have a garrison in B5. If we tried to place a garrison where our half-track is, it would be too close to our current garrison in B5. But because the 200 meter distance limit does not apply to half-tracks, we can have more spawns here, which is always a good thing. Notice how the half-track here is concealed behind cover again. Also, because our half-tracks don't lock up when an enemy is within 100 meters in unlocked enemy territory, it is possible to get them a little closer to the action than a normal garrison. 
Which brings me to the next way to use these, which is where I think the half tracks really shine. I call this the aggressive tactic. Let's say we have our attacks coming from the north and the south, where our offensive garrisons already are. But we have a little bit of a stalemate going. The half track is a perfect way to throw a wrench into the current situation. We can take our red zone half track and assault with it, moving it into an area of the front where there currently isn't much fighting. This is risky, but can be a great way to force the enemy into responding. There are a couple caveats here that are important for me to point out. First is that this move will not be effective if you are doing it solo, as it will take 60 seconds for anyone to spawn in, and you'll surely be spotted compromising the whole assault. How do we fix this? Passengers. Always have passengers ready to disembark and immediately start fighting to buy time for anyone else to spawn in and to clear the immediate area. Second, the goal of this assault isn't necessarily for this group to single-handedly turn the tide. It's to give the enemy an additional and immediate thing to worry about and respond to. The other squads pushing from the other directions need to keep their attacks going or else this is likely to fail. I've seen it where the other squads abandon their current combat and spawn on the half track and 9 out of 10 times the whole attack fails because the enemy is given a chance to respond and recover. It is possible that you will eventually lose this half track so the other squads need to take advantage of this opportunity to gain ground. As always, it's important you find some cover to help give your passengers a chance to disembark and establish themselves safely. Also, any officers need to place OPs quickly, as the half-track is good for getting to a location, but not great for a sustained presence due to the 60-second spawn timer. This has to be a coordinated effort, and the squads that are currently fighting need to keep up their combat in order for this to work. If defense is going well at La Prairie, it's not a bad idea to use this half-track to bolster your fight by moving a defensive squad to offense, but it's imperative that the other attacking squads keep their pressure going. I know I keep harping on it, but I have never had this tactic work when they abandoned their positions. The effect the half-track introduces to the attack is lost if the other areas don't remain under attack. This is my favorite way to use half-tracks, even though it is difficult to organize. Moving on to what I call the advanced tactic. Let's say our aggressive move is working and the enemy has led up their attack on La Prairie in an attempt to bolster Western approach. Or perhaps we have three half-tracks on the field. Either way, we can either take our defensive half-track or third half-track and place it in locked enemy territory. As we know, this is useless right now, but as soon as we capture Western approach, this half-track will immediately become available to spawn on, depending on where the timer is. I think it's good to have a recon team take care of this move, as one can monitor the area you wish to move the half track and update the driver as to the current situation. It's important to coordinate this move a little bit too as you don't want this half track to be spotted. You also want this half track to be concealed as good as possible and hopefully in a place where a recon team can babysit it for a short time. This can also be risky and may not be the best use of resources so make sure the situation is right before employing this tactic. Having said that, it is a good way to get a team spawn near an enemy strong point or even just in the sector quickly after capturing territory. Then there is the backup half track. If you find yourself in a position like this where you already have eight garrisons and want to make sure you have all your bases covered, then you can have a half track on or near a rear area strong point. I wouldn't waste fuel on it, but if you have plenty of fuel, it might not be a bad idea. Maybe you're low on manpower as a commander and don't want to use the dismantle garrison order. I think we've all been in those games where it looked like you were going to win and 10 minutes later you're on your back foot wondering what the hell happened. So having an extra spawn somewhere in the rear to respond is not a bad idea. What are some other ways to use half tracks? Well, as an armored personnel carrier, after all that is what they are, for the few squad leaders out there that are already using the transport trucks in this way, this should be an easy transition with the added benefit of also being a team spawn point with extra protection. Personally, I try to assign these vehicles to a specific squad and make it their responsibility or use it as a CO myself to ferry troops around. If you assign these vehicles, then it's much easier to coordinate them. Lots of times you'll get squads that designate themselves as either offensive or defensive, so just assign them accordingly. Using half tracks, and transports for that matter, are great ways to move troops around the map quickly and this is often underutilized. 
The other day I was in the admin cam observing a match and I saw a half track being used in a unique way. I wish I would have recorded it, but it was on a different map, but let's use the cemetery as our example here. I was on the defending team and the attackers had a half track that would spawn a wave outside the strong point about 50 meters or so. He then moved the half track to a different location and repeated this a few times, so every minute or so there was a new wave attacking from a different angle. I could hear the defending comms and what was so interesting about it was every time the defenders would figure out where the last wave came from, the new wave would appear. The defenders consistently misidentified where they needed to reinforce. It was an interesting lesson that I hope to incorporate into my tactics eventually. The problem was that the attackers would continually abandon their last attack, so even though the defenders were a step behind, they were always able to eventually stop the new attacks. So with a little refining, I think that this spawn move, spawn move tactic could be effective. The spawn timer does start at 60 seconds every time you stop the engine, so this guy wasn't spawning a wave, then driving for 55 seconds, and then immediately spawning another wave. He would stop and wait 60 seconds, then move again. Shout out to David Walker for asking about this specifically. I see a lot of people do what I call doubling up. Doubling up is when they park a half track next to a garrison. I think the idea here is to just have another spawn in case you lose one or the other. I personally don't think this is the best use of the vehicle, as I feel its major appeal is driving yourself someplace else to spawn and attack from a different angle or defend from a different angle. I see this most inside strong points and I just feel it's best to use one or the other here versus using both. I just feel it's a bit redundant, but that's just my opinion. In conclusion, I want to point out that the half tracks have been a pretty good introduction to the game and they appear to be pretty well balanced with their high cost, limited number, relative fragility, and long spawn timer. But they also have enough benefit to be useful, as they have different mechanics than the regular garrison spawns. I know a lot of people aren't using them, but I really think you should start as they come in pretty handy if handled properly. They aren't a replacement for a strong network of garrisons, but they are capable of really shaking things up from time to time and are useful in addition to a strong garrison network. Taking your squad from area to area in one of these and acting as a group of Panzer Grenadiers is a pretty unique and rewarding experience. Make sure you are using them as personnel carriers, setting up OPs soon after disembarking, and choosing your tactics appropriately, and you'll be enjoying them as much as I have been. So there's my take on half-track tactics. I know this video wasn't very exciting as it's just maps and information, but I hope you enjoyed it or learned something nonetheless, or at least got some fresh perspective. Remember to put your half-track experiences and point of view down in the comments. As always, check the description below for links to help support the channel. There's a PayPal link and affiliate links to PC hardware and accessories, as well as a Green Man Gaming link to buy your video games through. If you want to play with me or play with a community, then check out the Discord link to Glow's Hell Let Loose community. I appreciate all the continuing support and hope to see you in the next one.